Today we're talking about an important topic because there was a recent study that showed that 40% of small business owners consider themselves to be financially illiterate, but not a lot of small business owners are interested in hiring someone else to do their bookkeeping. So imagine having a person who doesn't understand finance and accounting doing your bookkeeping. Well, that's the case that a lot of business owners are in. So we're going to talk about when is it time for you to stop doing your own bookkeeping. So stay tuned for today's episode. So welcome back to another episode of The Stuff Your Accountant Isn't Telling You. I am Terrell Turner, and I'm joined by Lola Turner. Welcome back to the show, Lola. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, today is a very interesting topic because, you know, I read the statistic that, you know, 40% of small business owners feel like they are financially illiterate, meaning they don't understand finance well and they don't understand accounting well. But at the same time, when you're asking a lot of small business owners who do, who does their bookkeeping, oftentimes the answer is, well, I do it myself. Right. And I'm just like, okay, right. all right. Those two points seem to be like counterproductive. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a little bit concerning. When I read that statistic, I'm like, man, if you consider yourself to be financially illiterate, but at the same time, like you're doing your own bookkeeping for whatever the reason might be, um, and we'll dive into some of those. Would you, and I think the way that you said it in the intro was such a good way, is like, would you trust someone? Would you pay someone um, who didn't have any good account, like who didn't have any finance and accounting experience to do your finance and account? like your finance, your financial, like bookkeeping or whatever. And the answer, if the answer to that question is no, then you probably need to look at switching and actually having a professional take care of it, especially because I think a lot of times um, people think about like, hey, at the end of the year, I have an accountant looking at my financials. And really, they're talking about like their tax accountant. So every year, you know, they take all the receipts and all the stuff I've done, and they put the stuff together and they come up with a tax return. So I'm okay, I'm fine. But I mean, there's a lot of, of issues or a lot of, I think, things that are missed when you approach your financial situation like that as far as your business goes. So I'm kind of curious to talk about that and really understand like when we talk about, hey, it's time to evaluate, you know, and, and consider if you should still be doing your own bookkeeping, like what that really means. Because I think, Terrell, we need to start there because not a lot of people, I think, understand that. Okay. You know, let's start there. So when it comes down to, okay, should you be doing your own bookkeeping um, or should you be doing your own accounting? Um, mm -hmm. I think, as you said, the first thing you need to define is, hey, what is considered bookkeeping? What is considered accounting? Like, what does that actually mean? Because I agree. I think a lot of people don't understand what bookkeeping actually means. Right. So when you think about that, what do you consider bookkeeping to be? I, in my definition, I would say someone who is on a monthly or quarterly basis, bookkeeping is actually going through the process of, and I'm just going to simplify this because that's what we do here, is understanding, being able to look to see someone that can give you results that tell you how your business is performing. So bookkeeping is basically the act of going through categorizing transactions, um, understanding, hey, where does this fall? What is this related to in my business? But also, I think the more important part, which is, is what I think a lot of business owners are missing, is that proactive insight of what the numbers actually are telling you and what you use those numbers the decisions that you make from those numbers that you get. So that's how I would define it. It might not be the best definition, <laughs> but that's my thought when I think about bookkeeping is, hey, properly categorizing the transactions and looking at, hey, how is your business spending money? And then once you understand that, for me, the extra step, which I think is the most valuable step, is then being able to take that information and make decisions in your business. Okay. So I, I would definitely, how would, I would you, how would you define, define it? Please. Slightly different because the way <laughs> that I would approach ahead. it is, 
is I would say that that I agree on, yes, categorizing and reconciling bank account and bank activity. So whatever accounting system you're using, whether you're using FreshBooks, QuickBooks, um, Zero, um, Zoho, whatever you're using is they're yeah. taking your transactions and they're tipping all those transactions into either PN, profit and loss or income statement accounts or balance sheet accounts. So at the end of the month, they can say, hey, your bank balances, they, they agree to what your actual financial statements say. And hey, here's okay. how much money you made and here's what your expenses were so they can see your bottom line. Like that is all bookkeeping. Now, mm -hmm. I will say there are some, depending on um, you know the nature of your business, you may get your bookkeeper to also run payroll for you. You may get your bookkeeper to also like do your accounts payable, meaning like they're paying bills on your behalf or they're following up on accounts receivable and stuff like that. Like bookkeepers may do those type of things, but that, in my opinion, isn't part of the core bookkeeping. Like those are things you pay I extra agree. for. Let me put it yep. that way. I agree. Yeah, yeah I agree. So, Go ahead. Were you going to say something? Go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, on the, you know, where it starts to get interesting on the part about telling you what's in your numbers, I will say is I don't think that that is standard bookkeeping. I think standard I, book, yeah. bookkeeping stops at, hey, the the information reconciled. I can create a, you know, profit and loss and a balance sheet and cash flow. Pretty much I just hit the button and the system does it for you. But I think that's where you start to step a little bit more into advisory kind of CFO services where someone who has more advanced skills can look at the financials and say, hey, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what this might mean for your business or here's what type of decisions you may want to start thinking about based on these numbers. So let me ask you a question. I know that we talked about the basic bookkeeping. I agree. Basic bookkeeping is you should be able to provide with provide to me a set of financials with my results of how my business is doing. Would you say when it comes to the treatment of like, for example, what goes on your balance sheet, what goes on your income statement? I'll just use an example because this is the top of my mind. How we categorize for like, for example, for a company that's like a prop property management company. How we treat when we think about the mortgage payments that are being made for properties that are being run, right? How you treat the interest on that, how you treat the actual principal on that, like the, the handling of that. Would you say that that is something that a bookkeeper is expected to know or like some of the more, I guess, accounting treatment questions would you say that a bookkeeper is expected to know those things? Um, or is it more so, hey, you kind of need to figure it out as a business owner and tell them what they need to do? I mean, absolutely not on the business owner, because um, I don't expect the business owner to say like, hey, you need to understand these technical accounting things. I think mm -hmm. that is the that is the bookkeeper's responsibility is doing a simple journal entry for being able to split out the difference between what is a principal payment, what is interest? Because I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, if, you know, and I've seen, and, and I will say, okay, let me back up for, to, before I go too deep into that, to, to, to set this up for those that are listening, for those that may not do bookkeeping or may not, you know, understand the technical accounting on this. So generally what happens, let's say a business has a loan and let's say a business has, you know, they're, they're, they took out a loan to support their business. Every payment that you make is going to have principal and interest. Well, mm -hmm. the interest portion of it needs to go to the income statement as an mm -hmm. expense. The principal portion of the payment actually goes to the balance sheet to reduce the liability. So it's one payment, but in the accounting, it has to go in the two different places. Now, where I've seen this to be an error is I've seen people who are doing their own bookkeeping. What they do is they take that payment and they put all of that payment in interest expense. Well, technically, you are that is not correct because not yeah. all of that is interest. And you may say, well, what's the big deal? Well, when you file your taxes, you could get in trouble for that because you're understating your income. You're like yep. you're inflating your expenses, which means you're paying less taxes, which could be a problem. So that's why it's so important to get that right. Now, I feel like the um, bookkeepers should be able to get that right. 
I feel like that is something that if you are a bookkeeper and you are doing the accounting for a business that you should get that right. If you're a bookkeeper now, if you're a bookkeeper and you don't understand it, you don't know it, then you need to go do some homework. You need to yeah. understand because to me, that's basic accounting, because if you're doing that wrong as a bookkeeper, what you are doing is you are giving that business owner incorrect financial statements and it could be a huge you know, it could be a huge issue. I mean, if you think yeah. if the principal payment is pretty big, like you're giving them incorrect financial statements, which means that they're probably going to file an incorrect tax return. Yeah. And they're going to have lower liabilities and <laughs> the tax, the, the IRS is going to come after them. So you don't want to do that. So I guess if we were to define bookkeeping, just to recap, bookkeeping, at, 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 I would say what it's defined as anything that the bookkeeper basically needs to do to ensure that they are handing over accurate financial statements, whether it's an income statement or a balance sheet to you, period. That's that's the basic, I guess the basic bookkeeping is you have reconciled, you can tell me at the end of the month, this is what my numbers look like. Is that fair? I would say that is very fair. Okay, cool. All right. So now that we understand what bookkeeping is, and we understand, hey, that's what at a minimum should be done. I guess now the question is, at what point would you say that, you know, like for the audience that's listening, if someone's doing their own bookkeeping and they're like, hey, I've, I've been doing my own bookkeeping, like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm directionally correct on some of the things that you guys have mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, at what point do you, do we, are we telling our audience like, hey, guys, you probably need to consider not doing your own bookkeeping at this point? Yeah, I mean, I would say the first one is if you are not able to get financial statements to to look at on a monthly basis, I would say, or a quarterly basis, depending on how far along you are in your business, then I would say that's probably sign number one that I would probably say, hey, you need to start considering, you know, bringing in a bookkeeper because you doing it yourself. The work ain't getting done. I mean, and and, yeah. and it may not be, and it might, it's not that, hey, it ain't getting done because you're, you suck or you're bad or whatever. It's just not getting done because you don't have time to do it. Like there's a bunch of other stuff for you to do as a business owner. And that is very fair. So I would say if the financial statements are not being produced, then it is time for you to consider like, hey, maybe I need to hire somebody for this. Yeah. And the reason I would say, just add one more thing to that. The reason I would say that's extremely important is because, and I, I've talked to business owners. I talked to a specific business owner who was interested in our services and they weren't doing, her husband was doing their financials and he was doing it at the end of the year, like January of the next year, just to get the stuff ready for their financials and to get their stuff ready. Cause they had to report in the, in the space that they were leasing, they had to report how much revenue they had earned. And so he would spend, I mean, it was just something that she told me, she's like, I just completely dread the process of having to go back and answer questions on transactions that we had months, you know, 19, 18, 18 months ago, whatever. Cause he's behind <laughs> like some stuff he hasn't done. And he's like, you know, eight months ago, I don't remember what these charges are. And especially because they didn't have a separation between their business and their personal account, which was the worst. So they're going through and having to identify those transactions. So I would say, I think the more, the biggest reason why we say what we say is because you want to make sure that you're being proactive. And if you don't have a view of how your business is doing, within a month or at least a quarter, it's hard for you to pivot and make decisions timely because responding to and looking and seeing, man, I lost money in January of 2023 is not really going to help you pivot because you're already in the new year. And let's say maybe, you know, you've made investments and now it's like, dang, like I'm locked into this. And now the numbers are are telling you a completely different story. So I think it's an extremely important. What's, what's another reason, Terrell? Yeah, I mean, I think is one of the obvious ones is you don't know what you're doing, um, because I do think sometimes people do get into doing their own bookkeeping. But if you don't know what you're doing, then it's like, don't do it. <laughs> like it, it, if you don't know what you're doing, it's like there's no need for you to kind of guess and try to figure it out. Like at a minimum, I'm like, reach out to a bookkeeper and you know, maybe sit down, do a, an hour long conversation with them and ask some questions 
um, Mm -hmm. so that some stuff can actually make some sense. Right. And I would say the guesswork is the worst because you don't want to put yourself in a situation (laughs) where we've seen a lot of uh, people that we've talked to who they were like, yeah, I just, I kind of just went with it and I didn't think it was a big issue. And then they reported their, their, you know, they reported their income statement and they reported their, you know, their taxes and it really changed the trajectory of their numbers. So I, I think that's extremely important. And even if you, I would say this, even if you feel like, you know, I, I think if you feel like, man, like I, I can learn this. I mean, if you feel like, Hey, I can learn this then Like I, like you said, Terrell, I think they, there needs to be an investment. And in, even if it's a one-on-one consulting session of just understanding, like, Hey, what are the basics? Like, what, what is it that I need to, to understand? Absolutely. And I think the next one is, is definitely when it comes down to financing, because I've seen a lot of people that are, they're trying to get financing from a bank to mm. get a, a larger loan. And a lot of times if you're asking for um, if you're asking for, you know, a considerable amount of money, like if you're asking for more than half a million dollars, the bank wants to see financial statements. Right. And there was a business that had reached out to me and said, hey, we need to produce some financial statements for, you know, our business and where we are today. And I was like, OK, cool. Um, and they would say, Hey, can you help? Can you take a look? And they were like, was there, there's some issue that's going on with the QuickBooks. Cause that's just what's in QuickBooks is not right. And I went down and I looked at it and I'm like, I see why it's not right. I mean, it, it was one of those situations where now this was a situation where the business had done almost $2 million in revenue at, so far. And when I looked at it, the biggest reason why, what, well, let me say a couple of reasons why it wasn't right is they were only using QuickBooks to invoice their customers. So only the revenue was coming through. Now, mm. all of the stuff that they were buying, they didn't have any of their bank accounts connected. So none of the bank transactions were coming in. So it's like, and you had almost no expenses showing up, but you had all this <laughs> revenue and it's just like, okay, all right, this is a situation where you guys don't know what you're doing. This is a mess and you need these financial statements to provide to the bank so you can get a loan. And I'm like, there is no way in the world the bank is going to say, okay, when they see this, because the bank is expecting a little bit more sophistication than this. And at that point, I'm just like, yeah, it is time for you guys to hire someone, whether you hire me or someone else, you need to hire someone who actually knows how to do the accounting here because you could miss an opportunity to get a loan with the bank to grow your business because your financials aren't in order. I agree. And I will tell you this to the business owners out there. If you are scrambling, like we saw that during the PPE loan, PPP loan, we saw that during like a lot of the government funding that was being done. If you are scrambling to get this stuff done at the last minute, you will be charged a pretty penny to get this done. So it's much better to be proactive and get someone that you're paying a reasonable rate on a monthly basis to do this for you so that when the time comes, you're not having to scramble and then pay a very high premium to get this done. Because I know we've done this for clients where the turnaround has been, hey, I need this in a week or hey, I need this in five days. And it's like, okay, if if, if we agree to do this in five days, you're going to have to pay a considerable amount of money because it does take time to do that heavy lifting in such a short time. So save yourself the money and time and also save yourself the likelihood of making mistakes because sometimes when you rush those things, there are things that can be missed. And I think that's a good point. And you know what you're saying, because I think about a, a client that was trying to apply for, or there was a business that was a, trying to apply for a grant because, you know, as we got, there was a grant that came out recently and our clients, Some of them want to apply for it. And part of the grant, when you start getting to substantial grants, like grants that are probably, you know, at, you know, $20,000 and up, sometimes what they want is they want financial statement information. They want tax returns. And so we went and we worked on that and was like, okay, all right, all of our clients, we made sure that they had the financial statements and stuff. And then there was some other people who weren't working with an accountant. They had been trying to do their stuff to their self. They came to us and they were like, hey, can you help us? And I'm like, well, you need two years worth of financial statements. Like 
So we're going to have to recreate your financial statements for the last two years. Plus, yeah. you also need a tax return for the prior year. And I'm like, you know what? Off the top, I'm thinking just, you know, off the top of my head, you're looking at like a $7,000, you know, charge. And they were mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, we don't know if we can afford that. And I'm just like, this is probably what you're going to you're probably going to see even higher prices when you go to someone else, because you're asking someone to do two years worth of work and a tax return in a matter of five days. Like right. you're going to pay a lot of money for that. And I'm like, seven grand is actually a discount. Like you're probably <laughs> looking at something higher you know, right. for what you're asking for. And I think that that becomes very important for businesses to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. because I think where a lot of people get, you know, into an issue is because they think that the only reason why you need the financials is because of your tax return. And I'm like, no, there's a lot of things that happen, especially when you're growing your business. If you're trying to get a serious loan, you're trying mm -hmm. to get a grant, or let's say if you're trying to bring on an investor, or even if you're just trying to understand how to make smart decisions in your business, you need to understand what is going on with the numbers in your business. And so if you're trying to do or if you're trying to do your own bookkeeping, but it's not getting done, I'm just like, you know what? It's time for you to mature as a business owner. Like right. that's you need to bring in somebody to help get that in order, keep that organized and really help you move that part of your business forward because you're not going to grow if you don't. No, that's good. I think that's like a very good way to move on to a good side going to the next point. And that was if your revenue is more than $12,000 a month, it's probably time for you to consider getting some sort of um, financial support on bookkeeping. Can you expand on that one a little bit, Terrell? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes down to, you know, bookkeeping, do recognize it's going to come with a price. I mean, it's not going to be it's probably not going to be one of your cheapest expenses. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the the lowest I've seen is something like, you know, three, four, three, uh, three to four hundred dollars. And that's, you know, three hundred dollars is on the very basic level, meaning like you sign up. Um, there's like a service called like bench um, accounting where you sign up for a service. You give them access to a couple things. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to send you a lot of questions and say, hey, yep. well, what is this? What is this? So you're still going to be hands on and you're still going to be involved. It's not like, hey, I pay them three hundred dollars and they just take care of it. Like you can there's coast. a lot of technical not things. Coasting. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of technical things that they might miss. And there are some things that they're going to be pulling you back in to where it's like it's not going to be out of sight, out of mind. So I will say is do understand that there is a price that comes with, you know, proper bookkeeping services, which is why I say it's like, hey, if you're doing about 12000 a month in revenue or above, you can afford to pay for some bookkeeping services. Of course, as your business grows, what you pay may grow as well because you got to make sure that the service you're getting is keeping up with the complexity of your business as it grows. But yeah, I would say if you're doing a minimum of 12,000 a month, it could be definitely time for you to hire a bookkeeper because you got enough transactions, you got enough revenue and you got enough traction in kind of your growth to be able to afford to pay a professional to do it. That's good. That's good. And I think, you know, in line with paying a professional to do it, I think, Another thing is, and I think we, you may have already talked about this, another one, and I'm, I'm, I think at this point we're at five, we make sure we cover them. But the point is, I think we're if five. you're, we're past five, okay. <laughs> did we already talk about tax returns? I think we did. I mean, we, we briefly talked about it, um, yeah. but, I, but I think to, you know, to the, the last piece also on the tax return is, you know, a lot of people are paying, their tax return actually costs more money than it should. And that That's is good, because- yeah their tax accountant is having to do extra work because mm -hmm. they either don't have completed financials. So the tax accountant has to go in and do that. Mm -hmm. Or what ends up happening is the tax accountant sees that you don't have your stuff together. So your, your tax return goes to the back of the pile, which mm -hmm. means 
they're going to probably automatically file an extension which means your tax return is going to get done much later, which means they're probably not going to electronically file it. They're going to file it by paper, which means there's going to be a delay. And so one of the things that we've been doing a lot of is just working with business owners like, hey, I know you have a tax accountant, but you need someone at least on a quarterly basis that can you know, get your accounting records up to date. So on January 1, or let's say, January 15th, your mm -hmm. financial statements are already done. So when you go to your tax accountant, it is very quick because some tax accountants may charge you by the hour. So, I mean, if you think about that, the tax accountant is charging you, let's say, you know, $200 an hour. Do you want them to take 15 hours to do your return or do you want it to get done in eight hours? I mean, and right. if your financials are already done and your stuff is in order, they can move through it quickly and move on to the next one, which means your cost is going to be less because your stuff was in order. Right. And I think also is if they're spending time fixing your stuff, I mean, it, it, like you said, it delays it. I think the other thing with also the automatic extension is you're still responsible for whatever it is that you owe. So like if you owe money, yeah. there is a there's interest that's piling on what you owe. So they don't say, oh, because you've extended your tax return due date um, or you're filing the extension rather. Oh, you don't have to pay what you owe. Like if you, you still have to pay what you owe and then you have to pay it. Um, based on interest by the number of days that you're delayed by. So definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah. And I would say on that, because there was a company that reached out to us because, you know, they were, their prior accountant could not get there. I mean, and they had hired an accountant. Now the accountant wasn't the greatest that they hired to do their tax return. And, <clears throat> you know, that accountant had not been able to really close out their accounting records and stuff like that. And so one of the things that they hired us for is because they were trying to give the financials to their tax preparer and their tax preparer was just like, I don't know what to do with this. And so their tax preparer sent it back and said, hey, we can't file your taxes using that information. And so they were just kind of stuck in this limbo to where they missed the extension deadline. They were going to have an additional penalties added on. Then they reached out to us and like, hey, we can do the bookkeeping, we can clean it up and we can get you squared away. We did it. They took that. They took what we did back to their their tax account and their tax account and said, all right, this is good. We can do this. Now, they were probably able to move through it in less than a day because we did it properly. And so that's mm -hmm. where I think, you know, for a lot of people run into issues because they aren't getting that stuff done on a regular basis. I agreed. I fully agree. Um, any last thoughts just on things that people need to consider? I think um, I think pricing is probably usually a big one. Like when people think about, okay, fine. Like you've won me over Terrell and Lola. Fine. I'm going to consider, <laughs> I'm going to go hire a bookkeeper. What's typically the guidance you would say like, okay, this is what you should expect to pay for a bookkeeper, depending on where you are in your business. Yeah. I mean, I think when it comes down to a bookkeeper, you're looking at two to three and a half percent of your revenue. So I would say is, as we said before, I mean, if you're looking at $12,000 and I'm just going to do the math here. So you're looking at $12,000. And if you take 12,000 times what 3%, that's about what, um, what $360. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. $360 a month. So I would say two to three and a half percent of your revenue and I know that there are some people out there that are saying like, well, I'm paying somebody two per, you know, $200 a month. I mean, great for you. If that person can actually give you what you need for $200 a month, I will say is they probably won't be pay they, they probably will not be accepting that for long because they're not going to be able to make a living on, on $200 a month. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be asking for something more soon or what you may find is, is that, and I've seen this happen where there are people who are saying like, hey, I'm paying $200 a month or $300 a month. And I'm like, okay, well, what is this person doing? And they explain what this person is doing. And then three months later, they reach out to me. And they're like, well, the person found a job. And so they can no longer do the bookkeeping because they went back to work. And I'm like, because they can't make a living doing, you know, books for $200 a month. I'm yeah. like, 
you know, even for for us, one of the things that I tell people is that we the I would say we came up with a special program that is limited to a few business owners. And I'm like, the lowest we can go in that program is four hundred dollars. Now, it may vary depending on what you need. But I'm like, for four hundred dollars, do understand you're not getting like the same thing we whistles. give to the people right. who pay twenty five hundred dollars a month. Because right. what their needs are and what their budget allows is they can get more support. So mm -hmm. I do think business owners can look, should look at that and understand that, hey, if you're trying to go for the cheapest of the cheap, do understand you need to be flexible on what they are going to deliver. Because if you're going to drop the price, hey, the price can be negotiable, but you're not going to get like all the A plus services or you're not going to get every single, you know, detail of what a bookkeeper does if you're paying below average prices. Let me say this. If the price is negotiable, the quality of service is also negotiable. Okay. That's that for me is how I would, that is how I would define it. Okay. Don't expect to have the red carpet rolled out for you and the limo sent to pick you up. If you are paying 200, $300 a month, that is just a fact. I mean, you think about it in your business, like as a business owner, the people that pay you $1,700, even if you are like in your service based uh, business owners, people that pay you $1,700, $1,800 is not the same treatment as people who pay you $200. So, I mean, yeah. I think that's just the reality, but Hey, it just depends. Like, is that where your business is? And is that what your business needs right now? And if that's what your business needs, then just be understanding of the fact that, Hey, the quality of service, or the, let me not say the quality, the services that you will get, you may get a PDF in your inbox. It's still going to be done. Right. I'm speaking specifically for us, accuracy is of utmost importance to us. So the financials are still going to be accurate, but you might not get the weekly meetings. You might not get the strategy sessions. You not might. You will not get the strategy sessions. You will not get the weekly meetings. Like all of those things that we do that are for clients that are paying more money is just not something that comes. But best believe you at least know that you're working with an accountant who is going to give you accurate financials. And at the end of the day, that's what we recommend for everyone is as a baseline, like we walk through the bookkeeping definition, like you want to make sure that accuracy is is the minimum requirement. So they might not be giving you anything else, but they need to give you accurate financials. In, in no, I agree. I, I definitely agree. I mean, because and, and there, there's no mistake about it is that, you know, there is going to be a cost to get quality service and there should right. be a cost because there is no reason in the world why you should get something for nothing because you're not selling something for nothing to your customers. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I do like to do with some people is walk through an example. So let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is just share my screen because I think for the people that are viewing and for the people who are listening, I'll talk through it. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten about you, um, but I'm going to share my screen and, and what I'm sharing here. And let me just go ahead and zoom in. And, and Thank you. Cause, cause I can't see. I've done this example and it's really helped people to really understand. So let's say for example, if you were going to hire an independent, a self-employed bookkeeper, you're going to hire a self-employed bookkeeper. You know, you're probably looking at paying maybe $40 an hour um, if you're in the Southeast. Now, if you're in a major city, go up. But let's say, you know, very basic bookkeeper, self-employed, you're paying $40 an hour. And let's say on a weekly basis, um, you're paying, let's say it, it takes about two hours a week on a normal weekly basis. So that's about, you know, if you take that two hours a week times, there's what, three weeks in a month. Mm -hmm. So now you got, you know, six hours a month just to support your business. And then at the end of the month, there's some extra work because you got to do some reconciliation. So let's right. say if it's eight hours at the end of the month. So in total, what you're looking at is you're looking at about 14, at 14 hours. 560. And what I will tell you, a total of 14 hours of support a month, like that is for a very basic business, you know, for 14 hours of support a month. And that is going to come up to 400 or oh, $560. Now, let's take on the other hand. Let's say if you're a pretty advanced business and let's say you need about, you know, four hours a week. And let's say at the end of the month, it's going to take maybe about 
you know, 12 hours at the end of the month, you can definitely see the pricing starts to change. So I always tell people is, you know, when you get a price, sometimes people get this sticker shock of like, well, I thought it was going to be like a couple hundred dollars. And I'm just like, well, you probably thought wrong. Like one of the rules of thumb I tell people to use is look at two to three and a half percent of your revenue, meaning mm -hmm. for every and, and what that simply means when I say two to three and a half percent, what that simply means is every time a, a customer gives you a dollar, two cents of that dollar goes to your uh, your bookkeeper for keeping your books together and doing your accounting making sure that you are on top of things, making sure that you are ready to file your, your tax returns, making sure that you're ready to file your, you know, your sales and use taxes or your, your quarterly payroll taxes, like two cents, two pennies on every dollar goes <laughs> to that person. <laughs> I like, like the <laughs> emphasis on the two pennies. <laughs> this or is maybe just two you're pennies on the higher on your end. Dollar. It's, it's yeah. three and a half three pennies. pennies that goes to that yeah. person for every dollar which means you're still keeping like you're keeping 96 96 cents that can go to you and other things in your business. So, I always tell people as hiring a bookkeeper can seem like a like an unnecessary expense, but I will say it it may feel unnecessary until you actually need what they deliver. Exactly. And like exactly. I said, in in the 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 business the business environment we've been in for the last few years there are a lot of people who have gotten denied for a loan that they needed to grow their business because they didn't have good financial records or they got denied for a grant that they wanted to apply for because they didn't have good financial records or even let's say if you're trying to apply for some type of certification or you're trying to become part of an accelerator program one of the things that they often require is that you have a decent set of financials because that shows that you are being serious about your business. Because when it comes down to grants, investors, even the government and banks, even the SBA, or it, when it comes down to accelerator programs or investors, having a clean set of financials shows that you are serious about your business. Because if you can't produce that, then they're probably not going to take you as serious when right. it comes down to your business or when it comes down to giving you money or helping you find money for your business. So I always like to remind people of that. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's really good because if I can't take you, if you can't show me that you have good financials and you even have a, how do I even know? Like, how do you have a good handle on how your business is doing? Like, how do you, if you can't produce good financials, how do I have confidence as a potential investor that you can tell me with confidence, even the figures that you're showing me, right? Hey, my, this investment is going to help me yield X percent growth based on what? If your numbers, your initial baseline is inaccurate, how do I know that these numbers are actually correct? How do I know that your actually, your projections are correct? So there's just so much, um, that goes into that. And I think I go back to the Warren Buffett statement of accounting is the language of business. You cannot operate your business without having sound financials and sound financials are, are basically accounting. <laughs> so um, I think one of the things that I do want to say also that I oftentimes tell people to run when people talk about, or I've heard business owners, like even potential clients that we've talked to be like, man, like I just, it's a little bit hard for me to pay somebody a thousand dollars to do my bookkeeping. Um, I always tell them, oftentimes my feedback is if you were to hire someone on your team to do um, bookkeeping and let's say the cost was $1,200 or let's just say, let's just say it was a thousand dollars a month you would be paying this person $12,000 a year to basically do bookkeeping for you. And there is nobody as a full-time employee that would be willing to take $12,000 a year as a livable wage for you to do bookkeeping, for, for them to basically be an accounting um, person on your team for your company. So at a minimum, even if we consider like some of the lower wager, wage cities, maybe you're paying them $40,000 a year or you're paying them $50,000 a year. That is still more than you would pay it within like the, the example that we used where you were, you know, a more complex company and you were looking at about $960 a month, that is still more expensive. Like $960 a month for a bookkeeper that you're hiring, like an outsource service is still cheaper yeah. than if you were to bring a full-time employee 
to do that for you. Then you have to think about covering the benefits, depending on how you bring them in. So I always like to go back to that question of if you were to hire someone in house to do this, it would like, would it cost you the same? Would it cost you more or would it cost you less? And if the answer is it's going to cost me less to do that, then it's probably mm -hmm. to your benefit to really make that investment because you don't want to wait until you need it. You want to be able to be proactive and really get ahead of having, you know, the financials that you need to make those key decisions in your business. Yep. And I will say, you know, to, to wrap up um, our conversation, one of the things that I always like to wrap up with is something that your accountant isn't telling you. So this is something that I think a lot of accountants aren't telling people um, and they aren't really exploring. And that comes down to this simple thing of whatever the price is, that there are some things, there is some room for negotiation. And a lot of times that room for negotiation comes down to what types of services are you asking for or are you requiring or what types of services are you willing to like forego? For example, if you want someone to do all the classification of the transactions, you want them to reconcile, you know, seven bank accounts. You also want them to run payroll. You also want them to do, you know, invoicing to your clients. You want them to follow up on AR. You want them to run AP. You're not going to get the budget price for that because those are all premium things when you put all that together. So one of the things that we've done and that we do on a regular basis, even with some of the clients that reach out to us and they say, well, you know, what? here's what I want. And like there was a client to reach out to us, everything they asked for, I'm like, that's like twenty five hundred dollars a month, what you're asking for. And they're like, oh, that's way above my budget. And I'm like, OK, all right, what are you willing to adjust on? Because what is your budget? And they told me what their budget was. And I'm like, well, for your budget, we could support this, this, this and this. And they were like, well, what about the invoicing? And I'm like, you know, in an hour, I can show your admin, your your admin who you're already paying. I can mm -hmm. walk them through and teach them how to do the billing. So you don't have to pay us to do the billing because it's going to be expensive for us to do it. But I can train your internal employee how to do it. You're already paying them. So they're just going to be more productive. Yeah, what they started realizing was, hey, you know what? There's a better way for me to approach this and the approach to pricing. And so I always say is what your accountant isn't telling you is that, yes, that may be the price that they gave you. But if you're willing to adjust on some of the services and even some of the things that you're asking for, your administrative assistant can probably do some of that. Like, I've talked to some clients when it came down to, let's say, for like AR and following up on invoices for people who haven't paid. Like we created a script for their admin to say, hey, if the person is 30 days late, send them this email. If the person is 45 days late, you give them a phone call. If the person is 60 days late, hey, they need an email and a phone call. And the business needs to figure out whether or not they want to continue doing business with that person if that person isn't paying their invoice. So it's like once you get processes in place, I'm like, it would be easier and cheaper for you to have this process in place than to be paying us a premium dollar to do what your internal admin assistant can do. Well, that's good. And that is definitely something your accountant is not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time.